talk to you about a common viral infection where there's much confusion, and that infection is herpes. Now, herpes can be broken down into two primary infections, either herpes simplex or herpes zoster. And the simplex infection can, is, can affect two primary areas, the oral herpes or genital herpes. But it's also been associated with a number of clinical conditions, and, and some of the more common ones would be Bell's palsy or multiple sclerosis or even Alzheimer's disease. But the one that you're going to most commonly be uh, concerned with and, and uh, interested in is oral herpes. And the, um, the reason there's a lot of confusion on it is because there's another condition that is commonly confused with oral herpes, or it's sometimes called cold sores. And that alter the other uh, confusing symptom or syndrome is canker sores. There's a distinct and clear difference. Canker sores are an, an autoimmune problem, typically a reaction to chocolate, citrus, or wheat. And they in no way, shape, or form will ever respond to any type of herpes intervention. I'll talk about those in a moment. So what is a canker sore? A canker sore typically is, a, is, an, is another term for it. It's called aptostomatitis, and it's an ulceration. And they typically are on the mouth or on the inside of the cheek, uh, sometimes on the tongue. And they're typically very, very painful. Um, and uh, you want some relief, of course. But if you try to use anti-herpes uh, uh, approaches for it, it just simply will not work. Now, the herpes uh, lesions are quite different. They're typically uh, on the lips, and they're uh, uh, typically small, little red blisters. And uh, they too can be painful, but they're completely different than canker sores. So it's an important distinction to understand. Now, the other type of herpes infection is herpes zoster. And herpes zoster is sometimes called shingles. And typically, that is a uh, reactivation infection because uh, most people uh, tend to get this herpes zoster infection when they uh, have chicken pox, the same type of virus. And it, the chicken pox virus remains latent in the autonomic ganglia and then some type of stressor. Typically, when you're much older, 60s, 70s, 80s or so, it becomes reactivated. But it can be, become reactivated when you're much younger, and that reactivation is called shingles, and which is a very uh, typically painful skin condition that can be extraordinarily painful and, and that many people seek treatment for. Uh, there's a number of different approaches that you can use for this. The typical antiviral types of drugs are drugs like Zovirax or Zovirax, and uh, those are used and uh, sometimes they're effective. My experience with them has not been favorable, and, and of course you know I'm, approached, I'm opposed to using drugs routinely for this type. So I like to use natural therapies, and there's a number of different natural therapies you can use for herpes infections. One of them would be lysine, another would be aloe vera, another is melissa or, uh, or uh, lemon balm, um, and uh, resveratrol, which is a very potent antioxidant from grape seeds, and garlic and lactoferrin. So these are all approaches that tend to work. But in my experience, the one that works the best are specifically uh, two interventions. One is, is a homeopathic for herpes, either herpes uh, simplex or herpes zoster, specific ones for those, and, and it's been surprisingly effective and very safe, non-toxic, virtually no side effects. And the other one that, be, that has those similar uh, responses would be EFT, or emotional freedom technique, which is a form of tapping on different acupuncture meridians that's been uh, a, a, for essentially a version of psychological acupuncture that is very, very effective because it, it goes in and not necessarily tapping on the pain or the fact that you have herpes, but on the emotional precedent that caused your immune system to weaken. And once you get to that, the immune system tends to become reactivated. Uh, they are um, a number of genes that are activated to help you resolve this condition. Now, interestingly, there is an, another new intervention, which I personally have not had the opportunity to try, but all the evidence suggests it would uh, work very effectively and, and supports its use, and that is the uh, adoption of high-dose vitamin D. Now, clearly, uh, there's been large numbers of successes with people using up to 50,000 units, 50,000 units of vitamin D every day, once a day for three days. Uh, especially if you uh, have not been taking vitamin D regularly or just have not had exposure to the sun. Uh, if you have had your vitamin D tested and you're in therapeutic levels, then clearly you don't want to use that. But more than likely, if you have normal vitamin D levels, you won't get the infection in the first place. So we know this, this approach works for flus, coughs, colds, 
and uh, appears to work for just about most all of the typical viral infections, even infections like herpes. So these are the approaches and the challenges. Remember to make the distinction between a canker sore and a cold sore because if you don't understand that, you are certainly going to select the wrong therapy. So hopefully this information was helpful for you and your family to uh, help you better take control of your health.